Hey guys, look, it's been a long hot summer, but it's not stopping me getting out into the forest. Really important time of year for me to do a lot of my scouting in the lead up to March the 1st and the start of deer season. In this video, I'm going to include just a little bit about reading sign, scats, game trails, etc. and how I go about interpreting them. Hope that's pretty useful for some of you guys who are starting out. Good times are natural. Started going for a walk and it's it's a bloody hot day, but that's all right. January, February, it's a very important time for me in deer hunting. And you think, well, why? It's not season. I'm not going to start at the start of season and then do my scouting and my recceing. First of March is when I'm hoping to be able to pull triggers as soon as humanly possible, load up with meat, and then get ready for a, an exciting time in the rut. So yeah, if, if you're keen and you want to have any meaningful success at the start of your deer season, you will be starting early. Just for scouting. As I go along today and I see anything meaningful shine, so I'm going to share it with you so that you know the kind of things I'm looking for. But what I'm doing is, as I'm finding sign, I'm mapping it all out. I'm putting pin drops on my GPS and um, and just trying to, I'm not just drawing dots together obviously, but I'm trying to work out where the travel paths might be. And so that way when I do start my hunting, obviously I'm going to be gravitating towards those areas but also looking to ambush them if they're on the move, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's see how we go. Well, a bit disappointed, only because this was out for three months in a spot that I thought would be bomber, but there was not a single photo of deer or any wildlife on this camera. So, good time to find out, <laughs> whilst I still got some time to put some more camera work in elsewhere. And that's the point, I'm going to go a completely different system. I'm going to probably walk along a river and, um, and see if I can find any game crossings there and then follow the trails up either way and try and find a spot from there. Alright, new area. Let's see if we find a good spot for this camera. Well, that was cool. Because the other day when I was out here, I saw all their tracks down by the creek and I thought, well, I don't normally come up this way and I'll just, just have a look. And what do you know, five fallow deer. And there they are hanging out on the south facing slope. It's a warm day, not 30, but just shy of. And um, they want to be where it's comfortable. And then all this kind of thick, low scrub kind of stuff that's um, it's just real comfortable for them to be in close to feed. So if I put a camera here and I see fallow deer, I already know that. I think I'm going to put it somewhere else and look for reds. That's what I'm going to do. So, I found myself a nice little creek, kind of choked up with blackberries a bit between two rows of pines. I've been walking down it. I found what's clearly a crossing across them, um, just blackberry and stuff knocked down, a bit of a mud patch, and clearly an animal crossing. I found deer prints here. It's fucking awesome. It makes me excited. They're not brand new, but considering that oh, the ground's still a little bit wet. I often look to see if stuff has fallen into the print. So if I've got the print and they're seeing a bunch of leaf litter or rocks and stuff on, it just shows its age. I was here myself two and a half weeks ago. So I know that it's within the last two and a half weeks. That's enough to encourage me. 
just because I found prints and sign in one place doesn't mean that's the be all and end all. That doesn't mean that you want to sit and wait over this joint. Um, you could put a camera up. You could put a camera up depending on how public or easily accessible the spot is and just see what's happening and what's, what's going by. Um, that might give you a sense of the regularity of its use. But generally, somewhere like this, especially if we're talking about red deer, it's only going to be used as part of a very broad, long cycle of the movement of the herd. Um, if it's being used more than that, well then, that's going to get you a little bit excited. It might mean, that, especially in the lead up to the rut, that would be a good thing. What you want to do though, is this is a kink in the chain. That's all it is, it's a kink in the chain. You mark a spot like this in the map. Yeah, you get a camera out and see how regularly they come through, but you're trying to link up different areas that you've found the sign and try and suss out a travel route. Because just coming here and waiting on a spot like this, well, it's, it's a mug's game. I don't think you would succeed. But if you integrated this spot as part of a long, broad journey through a whole bunch of different areas with sign, maybe linking up between game trails and all that kind of thing, staying maybe 50 metres off it so you can see the path that you think they're taking. Um, that way you might be covering two kilometres of potential ground where they might be. Um, a lot of other animal land and game share the same trails. You know, they start to interlink and then they might branch off depending on the different groups of animals and all that kind of thing. Um, often these game trails are linking up different feed areas. So that's what is going through my mind when I find a little crossing like this. I don't get crazy obsessed by it, but I'm excited because I can add this as a link into my chain and when it's time to really take hunting seriously. Because I'm scouting right now. I always bring a gun, I'm not stupid. But I'm in scouting mentality. But when I'm hunting seriously, it's gonna be like bang up at four in the morning following these, this pre-planned trail that I think they're taking and I work with that. Yeah, there's some ideas. Well, being so close to a bloody mob of goats, I'm not allowed to shoot them. The river's the boundary. Oh, that's a pretty bloody nice trout, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Oh, he just took it a slow, a slow hit. Oh, Jesus. Um, I've been a bit rough with him, and he's gonna go in the, uh, go in the old esky, I think, but solid. Well, when the hunting's not on, why not harvest another way, you know? That's a really solid brown trout. I'm really stoked with that. He um, was pretty tame on the fight until he got right to the bank and then he kicked up a real fuss. But anyway, I, he really made a fuss of himself on the bank, so I'm gonna keep him. But um, 40 centimeters, 42 centimeters actually, but that's my, um, I don't know, that's my go-to length for a good, good smoker trout. That's what I enjoy. Well, might have not have an animal on my back, but this is a 
is a happy walkout. <laughs> this makes a happy profit. What a good way to end the day. I'm fired up for tomorrow. Well, hey, I made myself a comfy little, I don't know, bedroom out of the back of Tristan's car here. Got my anti zombie stick here. Got the esky there. Chocolate bickies. And good times out there. Into the never never. So, um, yeah, super excited to explore this new territory tomorrow after the crack. Catching that track will be real motivated. Good times. Sun just coming up. Good time to go. Well, it's not what I'm after, but the pigs have been absolutely to town here. If you can see that, it's like. Now let's have a look at this. Just hone in a couple of them. Much stubbier. Stubbier prints. And I'm seeing some others. I don't think these are all pigs actually. Like longer ones like that look more like deer, but oh, maybe that's just it scratching the soil back a little bit. Yeah. Alrighty. So, about 10 minutes ago, I put up two red deer. And they've come up this gully on this path here. And that is morning fresh. Oh, it's so soft. Red deer dropping. Now let me see if I can get a handful of it for you. Look at that. It's, um, just get a sense of that shape and that size. Now, if it's gonna be a younger animal, a fawn, it's gonna be smaller shit, obviously. Um, but they like little, I don't know, almost get into a little bit of a cubey shape. Um, obviously if it's soft and green and wet, it's pretty damn fresh. Sometimes it can be deceiving, though. They can still keep that look if it's been rainy. Or um, over winter, sometimes if it's very cold a lot, uh, they won't break down so easily and keep that moisture as they're breaking down. So, but obviously, nice and glossy, morning fresh. And um, if I came across that in a forest, I would try and find which way the prints were heading. And um, yeah, I'd follow them up. So interesting that they just said, oh, that looks like deer prints, not pig tracks. Um, because obviously, this, oh, this is only 10 meters away from it. And they were walking that way. So they walked through the pig digging after taking a shit. Anyway, good times. Very pleased to see the only two monotremes in the world in the last 24 hours. I was literally there, like 10 minutes ago. Oh my God. <sighs> that amazes me. How did they not smell me? I don't understand that at all. But that's awesome. Okay, right. 